Hello everyone, welcome back. I know that many of you have seen the documents that were released by NASA decades ago in relation to how they compute things that go on above the surface of the Earth and how it is relative to a flat, non-rotating Earth. And we've also seen the documents from the CIA that were leaked about the firmament. And my wheels were sort of turning the other day about all of this because I was trying to think about what this would be like if all of us had been taught that this was true early on and then there was a group of people who thought the earth might be spherical and flying around the sun and how crazy would we think they were until they started finding documents that said the opposite of what this says that said that all of a sudden you know space uh, travel and missiles are computed relative to a spherical rotating earth that's flying around the sun at 66,600 miles per hour. If the document said that, that would be something worth looking into if we had always believed what the earth felt and looked like, but there was documents saying otherwise that were either from our trusted space agencies or whatever the case was. That would get my wheels turning even if I believed in this to begin with. So I was thinking about that and thought, man, if they were finding some documents about the firmament back, you know, a few years ago, what if we can find some more? And sure enough, there are many more documents about the firmament out there. And I wanted to share a few of them. I know that censorship will stop a lot of this stuff from getting out, as it has been lately. I'm hoping that some of you I haven't heard from in a while, that it's just due to censorship and maybe you being unsubscribed as opposed to life circumstances bringing you down. So I'm hoping it's just the censorship, even though that sounds like uh, something YouTubers wouldn't say, but I'm, I'm not worried about the censorship. I knew that was going to happen. I just, my concern is with you guys and everything being okay. Now, uh, as I was going through these documents, you always find weird stuff. I didn't sit there and read real slowly. I kind of skimmed through them, so you may find more things than I did if you start looking but these are all searchable. I'll show you. I'll leave a link in the description of the website you can search for this stuff in. A lot of this stuff is searchable. Here's some of the declassified CIA documents that were shared in the past, one of them being about the shape of the Earth not being known. And this was by Russia, who was ahead of us, if most of you didn't know that, in the fake space race back in the day and leading up to the moon missions that we pretended to go on. They were ahead of us. And now I found it weird that they did not know the shape of the Earth back in 49 when they were allegedly sending people into orbit and doing things right after that. I know a lot of you thought that was strange as well, but just to summarize some of the things they were saying in those declassified documents about the firmament, we looked at things where they were testing the brightness of the firmament and the daytime sky and measuring these things as well as looking at the brightness along the certain parts of the sun and five to six points of the firmament located at various zenith distances. So they are looking at the distances of the firmament from the sun. thought that was kind of, kind of cool that they are trying to figure this stuff out way back when. And they are talking about the assumptions of this right here that we can't say without getting our videos censored or having that Wikipedia article show up underneath them that gives a bunch of lies. It'll probably show up down there anyways, since I mentioned the firmament. But if you talk about this and this, <laughs> based on these assumptions of a Earth that is not spherical and talking about the firmament in the same document, very interesting that they are doing that and deriving formulas from this. Those of you who believe in the globe, that's okay. Just know that the people who are doing formulas for space travel and experiments were looking into those assumptions and saying they have to assume that because otherwise they would be completely off with their calculations. Now, here's some more of the documents I found that I thought were cool and I would like to see more about them. Not that I will. I know the firmament's going to roll away pretty soon and we're going to see greater things than that but the second day of creation this firmament this great expanse was made stars placed inside of it and 
the document here was talking about this equipment, a camera that was able to capture or photograph the entire firmament down to the horizon. They were using a convex aluminum mirror to reflect the sky. So very cool that they were trying to capture the entire firmament down to the horizon and publishing these works. Maybe more people knew about it than we thought back then. So uh, lots of experiments regarding that. Also seen some about the temperatures of the firmament with really high numbers given. Very high. And this is something that talks about the color temperatures of the firmament and how they would amount to 6100 to 1750 Kelvin. That's cool. It's probably why when people were trying to send men in the Air Force up really high back in the day, a lot of them, or one of them, I heard back in the, uh, when they were sending them up in balloons, not rockets, the guy came back to Earth and had a fever of 108 degrees. This guy was experiencing something that sent him straight back to Earth. He aborted that mission because he started getting too hot. Could be because of things like this. I know it does get cold at certain points. It's weird. Heat rises, but once you get higher, it gets colder. I know that's just one of those weird things with with uh, the science of it all. But uh, it says here that the visual observations of glows, well as the analysis of photographs showed that the radar echoes also appeared at instance of absence of visible signs of glows and the angle of aperture of the directivity pattern of the radar antenna. Nevertheless, at this instant, the glows were observed in another section of the firmament. As a rule, the echoes did not appear when visible forms of glow were absent on the firmament. So they're studying some properties of the firmament that we weren't taught about in school how there are times that certain things echo when these glows are present. That's extremely fascinating. The complexities of this firmament, the movements above, how they can even affect things like the food caught pendulum and change how fast these things rotate when they're in their set patterns due to their ring magnets and all the things that they put on them to keep them in motion and the electric pulses and whatnot. These things are affected by the firmament. Really cool, and they were studying that in these radio echoes back then in relation to different glows, to the aurora, lights, all of those things they were studying. But they were looking at the firmament, knowing it's there. Here's some more where they were capturing the whole firmament and using different technology to do this, different instruments. These people were figuring out a lot and doing a lot of the things we're doing now and then some because they were operating with the wisdom of the fallen given that the CIA has been satanic at its roots since the beginning it's not one of those things that's for our own good they make it seem that way in Hollywood movies and that's part of their plan if you've seen the the uh, documentary out of shadows you'll see what I'm talking about you know mockingbird and a lot of the things that went on now here's one that really really fascinated me because the title of one of the segments in this article is called The Shape of the Firmament. <laughs> and if you look down, it, it looks like uh, Wide Awake wrote this book here. It talks about rings around the sun and the moon, pseudo-suns, pillars, twinklings of stars, rainbows, refraction, distortion of the suns and moons, discs at the horizon. It's weird that they call them discs, kind of like they did like in Enoch. And it says all sorts of different things. You know, the sound audibility of thunder, that echoing off the firmament. Really cool that they were writing this stuff in books. And I tried to locate this book. You can find some of the ebooks that if you look up these titles. And I'm not sure if I found it or one that contains parts of it. But I'll leave this uh, presentation linked in the description so you can sort through what I'm seeing. I have the links on a lot of these slides where you can just go right back to the document. If not, you can go to that website and just type in some of these little titles here and it'll pull it up. This is nothing really to spend a whole lot of time looking into. I just got bored the other night and pulled an all-nighter just reading through some of these things because I was a little obsessed with finding stuff. Trying to find photos is really what I was wanting to do, but I just kept finding these documents and really low-quality pictures. A lot of them are scanned in 
almost like they've been sent through one of those old timey fax machines. But um, this one here is another one where it says the um, increasing the number of panels and completing the circle, the entire firmament could be covered. And this one says the Eros firmament, the passage of the sun is almost five times quicker. So the sun's moving faster. They didn't say the earth moves faster at this one place. They said the sun is five times quicker. Day passes immediately over into night. The contrast between light and shadow are as pronounced as on the moon. I don't know what the Eros firmament is. I looked into it and found out the word Eros is like those ancient Greek and Rome, you know, backgrounds with the Greek god of love identified by Romans with Cupid or a winged figure. You guys have seen pictures. That's very <laughs> interesting that they called it at the Eros firmament. The passage of the sun is almost five times quicker. Lots of different things there that get your wheels turning. And here's another one yet again of the photos they were taking of the firmament using different technologies. You can kind of read about them. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about those. Really cool stuff. And there's a chart I came across that was talking about the distances of the sun. I really wanted to see what they were saying because I know it's probably not what we're taught. But the chart, again, it did not print properly. It would be cool to locate some of this stuff. And they were looking at the sky brightness. I don't know why that was such a big deal to them, but it was. And um, they were mapping all this stuff out, doing things that it's not public knowledge today. I know that with what's all going on in the world, this is not a trending topic. I'm not here to put out viral videos. I know with censorship and all of that, that's really impossible anyways. Just wanted to put this out for you guys doing research and the new people that are looking into this stuff and wondering what all have we known about this? Is it even true? And I'm seeing some heartbreaking things with people that are going to platforms like Facebook to do research because YouTube is not a place to really find stuff unless you have someone sending you links and helping you out. And even then, I've noticed I had to go in and clean up my playlist to where, you know, a third or more of the videos are just gone. The ones that were there, the proofs that we have, the long distance photos and whatnot, a lot of those are just vanishing without a trace, no reason at all, entire channels being deleted. And it doesn't even show you the name of the video so you can see what it was. It's just gone. And so when I go on Facebook, my brother pointed this out to me that a lot of people were going to those groups and seeing things and asking questions. And people that have been a part of that movement for a while and, and were able to find that stuff are just kind of somewhat arrogant in their replies. And it, and it sends people away. They'll just post memes. They won't really answer the question exactly because they feel like these people should already know this. And they don't. Remember the questions you had when you were looking into this, like, why are other planets round? You know, simple things like that that we think are troll questions, and they're not. People just don't know. It's new to them. The awakening is still happening. You're seeing people wake up like crazy to things, even if they believe in the globe. That's okay. That's not a reason to shut off fellowship. We encourage anyone who is here believes in the globe, Christian or not, doesn't matter, come here and investigate. You don't have to believe the way we do to get along with us. The time is running out for us to disagree and sit there and argue about things like this. It's not an argument. It's either you look into it and you believe it, or your scientific investigation leads you to believe otherwise. It's it's not a reason to uh, throw away fellowship opportunities. But uh, it is important to know who you are and who our Creator is and who the Father is. And I'm finding that the false science that we have that is forced upon us is leading a lot of people away from that truth and and it's set in place for a reason again if you've seen our videos about the sun god worshiping origins and all of that that's why you see those beast numbers throughout the entire helios or sun god worshiping model but to switch gears there's some other things we're working on i'm trying to put out a couple videos that we have had on the back burner one of those was that ancient map translated uh, interview I got to do with a man from Italy who I will let introduce himself in the video. My audio was horrible because of our dial-up speeds and it was a Skype uh, conversation but he, he translated a couple parts especially around the North Pole. That's what I was looking at in that video. Very fascinating stuff. Sort of uh, almost ties into the hollow earth type of theories that was going on where there's things that are below us that we don't know about. That was interesting and, and fascinating to read on the map. That I'll just kind of give you a clue into that. That's that's on there. 
but um, I've got it. The video's there. It just needs to be edited, and I'm trying to either redo some of my audio or just cut out most of it in general because it's low quality. But that's going on right now. I'm also redoing our In Who We Trust video because the last part, from what you guys pointed out, was um, a little misleading because the documents, from what was brought to my attention, were introduced a year ago. That wasn't a lie about the CARES Act. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can see the video. It's uh, one of those things that was introduced a year ago. It does have to do with the coronavirus, but the, there was a name change recently. They, they changed the name to the CARES Act recently, is what I'm told, and I've had people send me some pictures of that, and that's what it looks like. I don't know why they would change the wording and, and name of something like that in Congress so much, but they did. And without that knowledge, that's definitely damaging evidence of this thing being planned. I still know that it was planned, but that's not something that can be as damaging as I thought it was due to that information. So thanks for always helping us <laughs> share truth and pointing out times where we think we found something that was truth and it's not. So uh, you guys are definitely appreciated for that aspect of what you how you contribute to us. So. Uh, I'll be back soon to show some of that stuff. I'm hoping that I can get that finished in a rather quick uh, format. We've been busy here on the land, farming, doing stuff like that. I know a lot of you are feeling led to plant and grow and collect seeds. I encourage you to do that. I don't know exactly what the future holds. I just know that a lot of us have this feeling of urgency that time is running out and that something's right around the corner. It's not going to be fun to watch for those who are not ready. So do your best to prepare everybody. There's only so much you can do, but do as much as you can so that for people that will listen, to listen, and it will make a difference in their lives because a lot's at stake and there are battles going on. And it's one of those things that you can sense it, but to the ones who are operating under those powers of darkness, they know exactly what they're up against. We need to know what we're up against and how much we have access to. We have a lot more powers and freedom than we think. No matter what they're doing to the laws of this world, we are set free. We have a father who is going to gather us up very soon, and he's doing that right now. We're about to get set free out of Egypt once again. And it's one of those things that the world does not want to happen. They like their rule. They like their having control of their little kingdoms, and there's a reason that they killed many of the firstborn to try and stop the Messiah from coming. They thought they had a chance, and that's why they are censoring the truth, because they think they have a chance. They don't. Okay, we know who wins in the end. Just got to stay ready, keep on the full armor. I'm speaking to myself. I've been struggling a little bit lately with a lot that's going on spiritually. I thank you guys for lifting us up in your prayers. My wife is sort of on fire and a little disappointed in me because I haven't been reading as much as she has and studying. I've got to get back into that. And I thank you guys for keeping us in your, your prayers because we need it. We need to get out of our slumber as fast as possible. The one that's kept us down in the past and really created a lot of lost time. I think most of you feel that as well. There was a lot of lost time where we could have been doing things and we weren't. So uh, time to get ready, stay ready. And always know that you are a beloved creation of the Most High. We'll be back soon. Take care. God bless.